Support for this podcast is provided by the American Bar Association Tax Section. Are you looking to make valuable connections with government officials, academics, and tax professionals? ABA Tax Section membership provides you with opportunities year-round to engage and network in your area of practice. Members receive discounts on meetings, CLE, and publications, and membership also provides you with free, on-demand CLE and special members-only news and updates. Discover how membership can benefit you and join at ambar.org slash taxnotes. That's ambar.org slash taxnotes. Welcome to Tax Notes Talk, a podcast from Tax Notes, the leading source of tax news, information, and analysis. Welcome to the podcast. I'm David Stewart, Editor-in-Chief of Tax Notes Today International. This week, Women in Tax Leadership. On March 1st, the OECD announced that Marlene Nemhart parker would co-chair the BEPS Inclusive Framework. In this newly created role, she would be joining Fabrizia Lapicarella, who had taken on the leadership of the group just two months prior. Joining me now is Tax Notes Chief Correspondent Stephanie Sung Johnston, who recently caught up with the co-chairs to talk about their new roles. Stephanie, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks. Good to be here as always. All right. To begin with, could you give listeners some background on the two new co-chairs and what led to the appointment of an additional position? Sure. I spoke with Fabrizio Lapicarella, who is Director General of Finance at the Italian Ministry of Economy and Finance, and Marlene Nemar parker who is Chief Counsel for Legislation, Treaties, and International Tax Matters at Tax Administration Jamaica. Now, as you mentioned, Lapicarella took over as chair of the Inclusive Framework on BEPS on January 1st. Uh, Nemhard Parker was announced as co-chair of the group on March 1st, which just happened to be the first day of Women's History Month. So I thought it would be timely to get them both on the podcast. As you mentioned, this is the first time the Inclusive Framework has elected two people to lead the group. And you know, if you recall um, my previous appearances on the podcast, the Inclusive Framework is a group of 141 OECD and non-OECD jurisdictions that was set up in 2016. And it's committed to implementing BEPS project measures and is setting additional standards to curb corporate tax avoidance. And it's leading the work on implementing the two-pillar global corporate tax reform plan that you've heard me talking a million times about so much on this podcast. This group is technically an enlargement of the OECD's Committee on Fiscal Affairs, or CFA, which is the OECD's primary standard-setting body for tax issues. So the chair of the CFA has always been the chair of the Inclusive Framework. Uh, Lapa Carella herself has been deeply involved in the CFA Bureau since 2012 and was elected to replace Martin Krienbaum, who was the Director of International Taxation of the German Ministry of Finance. And it's notable that she is the second woman and the second Italian chair since the CFA's founding in 1971. Nemhard Parker has also been a longtime participant in the international negotiations on the world stage, and particularly through the UN Committee of Experts on International Cooperation and Tax Matters. She's also co-chair of the CFA's advisory group for Global Dialogue on Tax Matters and is a former member of the Inclusive Framework Steering Group. Now, the co-chair position was created after the OECD sent a report to the G20 finance ministers in October 2021. That report took stock of developing countries' progress in the Inclusive Framework and recommended that the group's governance structure should represent uh, developing countries better. So this co-chair position was an, a natural fit. All right. Could you give us a, a preview of what you talked about? Sure. Yeah, we talked about a lot of things, uh, the new co-chair format, how it's working so far, and what they hope to accomplish with it. I got the sense that because this new format was so new that they were still sort of figuring things out. But, you know, it sounded like they were getting along really well and they had been friends before. Um, So it seemed like this co-chair arrangement was going to be successful in their view. We also talked about the significance of two women leading the inclusive framework, their experiences and working in tax and, um, you know, advice for women who want to lead in international tax. So it's a very interesting conversation. Lapa Carella called in from Italy and Nemhard Parker called in from Jamaica. And I was grateful that they were both able to speak with me at the same time, given their busy schedules. All right, let's go to that interview. Well, thank you both, Marlene and Fabrizia, for your time today and sitting down with me to speak about the inclusive framework and the new co-chair structure of the framework. It is Women's History Month, and I think it's actually, it's pretty awesome that there are two very strong women in tax uh, leading the work, very important work that the OECD is doing in in international sphere. So um, I just wanted to get a sense of, you know, how you first got involved with the inclusive framework and, you know, how do you balance this work with your day job? Okay, thank you, Stephanie, and thank you very much for 
inviting me to uh, to spend this time along with my co-chair Fabrizio in a different setting, a more relaxed setting, <laughs> I guess you could say, because it's always work. Um, I well, I became involved in the inclusive framework in 2016 as a consequence of being the person at Tax Administration Jamaica in charge of legislation and international tax matters. And so it, it was a part of my job to, um, to lead the, the, the work uh, of the, um, BEPS, uh, the BEPS measures and the introduction of them into Jamaica. And so Jamaica became the 85th member of the Inclusive Framework in 2016. And so I, along with my co-delegate, uh, Bevan Sinclair, became the, the leaders on the work uh, for Jamaica. Uh, in international matters, we usually have a technical as well as a legal person in the international forum. And so that was my involvement. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of balancing, it's, I think it's important to have a supportive tax administration and government behind you. And so even though it's a part of your work, the fact that you have their backing as well as their confidence is, is very helpful. And they allow for the time, you know, uh, for you to do both. So that has been my experience. And Fabrizio, how about you? Well, um, not very, you know, in, in the substance is uh, very, you know, my <clears throat> story is very similar to Marlene's story in the sense that I was involved in the exclusive framework as uh, at the beginning uh, where it, where, when it was actually, um, when, uh, when it was uh, um, uh, established by the OECD and the G20 in uh, Kyoto in 2016, at the time uh, I was uh, actually, um, I was, uh, uh, Head of the Italian delegation, but since 2012, I was member of the Bureau of the Committee for Fiscal uh, Affairs. Uh, so that when the inclusive framework was established in Kyoto, in Kyoto, I became member of the steering group of the inclusive framework right from the beginning of, of the thing. And um, uh, and and well, uh, as to you know the dealing with the work uh, uh, that is carried out in that very demanding uh, forum and um, our own uh, domestic work that is uh, it's always been uh, in um, certainly uh, <clears throat> challenging. That it has become, uh, Marlene, you know, say, you know, and Marlene, I think you can say that I'm not exaggerating. It has become really, really challenging, you know, these days. So, you know, it was always certainly, you know, um, demanding, but now, like that, it will, it's always been demanding, now it's extremely challenging because. Uh, the amount of work, the complexity of the technical work, the, the frequency, the very high frequency of the meetings um, that are called, you know, on, on, a, on a weekly basis and sometimes, you know, more than one, more than one time per week. It's really complex not to be, but uh, I mean, we're all aware that we, I mean, first of all, we have, uh, you know, uh, we have to respond to a political commitment taken by our ministries, and we're all aware that we are doing some, uh, so to speak, some sort of exceptional work there, so we try to do our best. Support for this podcast is provided by the University of California, Irvine School of Law Graduate Tax Program. Ranked number one on the West Coast and number five nationwide, this innovative program prepares students to practice tax law at the highest level in the U.S. and abroad. Featuring a low student-to-faculty ratio, cutting-edge technology instruction, and dedicated career support, UCI's Graduate Tax Program helps prepare students for a future in tax law. Program graduates are placed in top tax-related industries, practicing law in many major U.S. cities. 
Applications are open now. For more information and to apply to this highly selective program, visit law.uci.edu slash gradtax. That's law.uci.edu slash gradtax. So I know that the Inclusive Framework Chairship is now co-chairs there, but there's one co-chair from developed countries, one from a developing country. Um, and that was a key recommendation in a report to the G20 finance ministers, a way to improve the inclusive framework so that developing countries can better benefit from it. And, you know, briefly, uh, how is this co-chairship working in practice? And what do you hope that this new arrangement will accomplish? <laughs> Well, uh, thanks, Stephanie. Um, as you, well, I mean, let me uh, say that uh, um, I just started, you know, I was appointed in uh, last year, but I, you know, uh, started uh, in this role as of January this year. And at the end of last year, I was invited by the finance minister of Jamaica, in fact, to take part to a very interesting high level conference with uh, um, a number of uh, very committed ministers from developing countries, the plus other tax officials. Um, that, and, and I was invited to, to, in a sense, to report back at that conference what we, I wasn't invited as a, uh, the chair of the CFA or the inclusive framework I was invited as, uh, as uh, the, the Italian representative uh, of the tax administration. So as uh, representing the Italian G20 presidency, I was asked to report back in that context what was the main uh, accomplishment uh, uh, for the stream of work of the, G of the G20 on tax and development. Um, which I did. Uh, after that conference, uh, uh, the Jamaican ministers actually circulated a very, a very interesting uh, brief, a very interesting, you know, uh, report on uh, on the meetings, making very clear, you know, what what were the uh, the expectations of developing countries, uh, you know, as a follow up to the, um, the G, the Italian you know, G20. And um, uh, against that background, when I started, uh, I actually uh, discussed with the, the secretariat, the OECD secretariat, the, 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 the right way to propose to colleagues to start with the establishment of a um, co-chair uh, appointed, uh, appointed by the other members, but selecting um, a colleague from a non-OECD, non-G20 countries. So we launched we launched the procedure and Marlene was elected by all our colleagues. And uh, it was, uh, you know, for me, it was particularly fortunate. Uh, we've been knowing each other for long. We've been, you know, all the time, <clears throat> you know, sitting at the steering group. We've always, we've always been sitting together, you know, you know it is e I for Italy and J for Jamaica. So we were. Uh, and um, it was, uh, you know, uh, and I think, I mean, this also is an element that, that, that helps, you know, the fact that we know each other very well and we can rely on each other for, for doing this, uh, this job. I think, um, I think this is more than a signal to developing countries on the, um, on the real willingness of making the process or making a, um, uh, uh, or making inclusive a process that uh, is so uh, that is so you know challenging for most of them and um, this is it I think I mean what we expect to do you know, to achieve from that is uh, we expect by sharing the responsibility of chairing this uh, um, 
extremely large forum. And I think we expect to be able to reflect as closely as possible, as well as possible, uh, the, the needs and of uh, the very diverse countries and jurisdictions that are, sit that are sitting at the table. It actually warms my heart that you both are already friends and now you're co-leading this very large job. So this is actually, I, I love that you are, are both, you know, already have a, like established working relationship and also get along really well. So that's, that's really nice to hear. Marlene, would you like to weigh in? I, I will. I want to um, support a, a lot of what Fabrizio just said, uh, Stephanie. Uh, uh, the statement of outcomes of that meeting, you know, set out some of the challenges that are well known. Uh, that developing countries have had with the governance process uh, of the of the um, of the inclusive framework, uh, the complexity of of the measures, uh, the voice sometimes that developing countries feel that um, have not been heard, and so uh, it was um, important. And it's interesting that it was under the presidency of Italy of the G20 that uh, you know this focus on the needs of developing countries uh, be, be met that, uh, you know, that gave rise to the subsequent discussions. And so I think, um, I think the intention is for us to work together to ensure that the entire constituency of the inclusive framework, that, um, that, they, that they, they see the benefit of the inclusive framework. And I think that, um, and I think we also have to realize that we are all on a kind of learning curve. Uh, as, as Fabrizio said, you know, it's much more complex, much more challenging to tackle the issues that we are now dealing with in the inclusive framework and developing countries who are at different capacities have in some instances been left behind in terms of the pace at which uh, the, the work is going. And so I think, you know, we, with the secretariat, We'll, you know, we'll have to work closely about how we address that gap so that uh, the um, members of the inclusive framework, some are not left behind while others are, you know, moving ahead because of their capacity issues and, and other concerns that they have. So it is, as she said, a lot more challenging. Um, but as she said, you know, we have sat together for many years beside each other and, you know, we are reflect and I said, boy, those days, we now look back on those days for Bitsy and think that we were, you know, they, it was a fun time. I mean, it was hard work, but our conversations, you know, were light. We talk about all the time. And now, <laughs> you know, uh, we are just, you know, have to be so laser focused on, on what is happening. It's a different environment and different in many ways. You know, uh, people are looking at the post-COVID response, how their countries are going to be built, how does this um, global tax deal fit into that, and, and so on. And so there are a, a lot more things, to, to a lot weightier issues to consider. Absolutely. And so uh, just really sort of shifting your focus a little bit, as far as, you know, it is Women's History Month, as you are aware, you know, how significant is it to you that now two women are leading this inclusive framework? You know, what does it mean to you well, I, uh, um, you know, I believe that the capacity of women to lead in any situation is settled. I think um, in addition to the technical expertise, uh, we do bring a kind of instinct, I think, for what is unsaid. So we are able, I think, um, instinctively to kind of sift through and to, to have that inner voice or that um, additional ability to hear what is unsaid and what needs to be said to provide clarity. So I think that, um, that, that we bring that. I think we also bring, we are natural consensus builders. And I think that given the current um, situation that we are in, I think that women bring that additional you know, ability as well. I think the real question though, Stephanie, is whether we are the right persons who should be leading the inclusive framework at this time. I think the fact that we are women uh, is good, but um, what, what do we bring to the table as, as, uh, with our technical expertise? And I think the, the fact that we are both here is a testimony 
to the confidence that has been placed in us by uh, our colleagues. And I think we, we I, 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 can, I think I can speak on behalf of Fabrizio when I say I think we, are, we feel honored and privileged that we have been given the opportunity to lead at a time like this um, where we are in a pandemic still, um, you know, economies have been devastated, particularly developing countries, there's climate change, there, is, there are supply chain issues, now there's a war and SDGs and domestic um, resource mobilization and all of these uh, issues swirling around and 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 so where does tax where does global tax fit into all of that how can it be a solution certainly to the issues of domestic resource mobilization building back company uh, countries sorry and 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 we have to lead that effort uh, from the global tax perspective and so challenging yes but I also believe that it creates a real opportunity for multilateralism, uh, you know, to, um, to provide a solution. And so the solution of digitalization has its many issues as we are aware, but I think that, uh, you know, our work will probably have to go beyond just digitalization for the, you know for the, because there are other issues that developing countries in particularly in particular are concerned about and they have been the ones that have been most impacted by the the pandemic and so i think it presents a real opportunity for us to be able to to work together and to work with the oecd secretariat and our colleagues on the steering group and the inclusive framework itself as well as other stakeholders who are observers to the to the um to the OEC? Fabrizio, how about you? Well, very quickly, my line said uh, a lot of very interesting and important things. I maybe I should add uh, um, simply uh, that uh, um, you know, I mean, what we doing is. Uh, uh, um, we, we're just starting, you know, the reality of uh, uh, a process of a unique, you know, the, an extraordinary process where developed and uh, developing, developed economies, emerging economies and developing countries are sitting around the same table to write down rules. So, so far what we have, I mean, last year, what we have achieved was uh, an extraordinary outcome, historic outcome, as was defined by many um, people. Uh, the historic outcome, outcome of achieving a political agreement uh, on substantive rules that change completely the, tax, the international tax architecture. Now it is, uh, now we are getting to the even more difficult phase of writing down the legislation, the rules. So it is, you know, is even more, you know, more difficult than the political agreement on the principles of the new rules. We should write. So this is the reality of the extraordinary evolution. Mm, standard setting at a table with 141 countries and jurisdictions. The process is so um, it requires uh, uh, every kind, I think, of soft skills. And to be honest, you know, I think that women are uh, naturally, I would say, endowed with the soft skill of a much higher quality than men are. Support for this podcast is provided by Avalara. Since 2004, Avalara's vision has been to harness the power of cloud technology to help simplify sales tax for businesses of all sizes. And their solutions are designed to affordably scale with businesses as they grow. Collecting tax for the government is something businesses just have to do. But getting the job done efficiently and correctly can be an incredible challenge because tax rules and regulations can be endlessly complicated. Avalara keeps track of how thousands upon thousands of products are taxed in more than 13,000 tax jurisdictions, and that's just in the United States. 
With more than 1,000 signed partner integrations, Avalara likely integrates with the ERP, e-commerce, mobile payment, and point-of-sale systems you use today. Find out how your business can be sales tax ready at avalara.com slash tax notes. That's avalara.com slash tax notes. Avalara, tax compliance done right. So can you speak to um, your experiences working in leadership roles in tax? You know, what were the challenges and advantages you faced and what is the future of women in international tax leadership? Uh, well, it is, uh, it is certainly um, uh, a, a world that has been, you know, you know, traditionally for years in the domain of men. But, you know, slowly, you know, women are gaining um, a space and also a significant space. Uh, uh, I don't know about uh, my list, but I mean, in my, um, in my, in my, at the Ministry of Economic and, fin- of Economic and Finance in Italy, uh, we are, you know, um, step by step rebalancing the the gender gap um, at the level of the ministry and in uh, um, in the department uh, in my department uh, I would say that if I uh, if I see at the the executive um, I mean, there are, you know, there are a number of uh, women that are uh, proving more and more, you know, uh, essential to, for the performance of the whole department. Um, I think it is, um, uh, it is um, uh, not an easy area, uh, mm-hmm. but, um, uh, but at the international level, I think we are encouraging some. I mean, um, at the end, uh, now an inclusive framework, uh, uh, I think that nearly half of the head of delegations is uh, female in the steering group. We have a third of delegates that are female. And uh, uh, we... Um, and if I, you know, uh, if I, you know, um, look back, you can see uh, that um, very important uh, step forwards have been made with input of women in tax. For instance, you know, the whole of the best project that is for then led to the to the. To the uh, to the establishment of the inclusive framework was, you know, literally started by um, um, a, a woman colleague of mine. I mean, it was Mana Cohen at the U.S. Treasury who, you know, started, who forced the brainstorming on uh, on uh, the issue of international tax avoidance uh, in uh, the context of uh, a globalized uh, economy. So, you know, I mean, it is happening, but it will take time. That's great. Marlene, what, what advice would you give for women who aspire to become leaders on the global tax stage? Well, I think um, one of the first things you have to ensure is that you have the backing of your tax authority. You have the backing of your country because, uh, you know, it is, if, and I'm, I'm speaking now specifically for women who are coming from a public sector background, working in tax administration, and perhaps my advice is more applicable to developing countries in particular, because that has been my experience. And so I'm going to speak from my own uh, experience and, and, and what helped. Uh, they, I had very strong support. I've maintain very strong support from my government, from my tax authority. I have a uh, very supportive staff that I also supervise. And so I think that support uh, is important. The confidence that they place in you, I think that is important uh, to, to allow you to, to participate and allow you to grow in this field. I think as well that it's important to build relationship with your colleagues in the global sphere 
So whether it's global forum, inclusive framework, other stakeholders, it's important for you to build a relationship and network, a network of, of experts in the field uh, who can um, provide mentorship. Mentorship has been very, very important, I think, in my own development, both um, at tax administration as well as there are a few uh, persons that have become my mentors and you know people that I speak to through the UN through just um, on the global tax landscape circuit that I have um, gained a lot from and it helps to fill your knowledge gap as well so mentorship I think is important I think being open to the rich and um, diverse views of your colleagues to realize that uh, they are under the same kind of pressure that you may um, be under. And so even when there is passionate debate going on, say, between developed and developing countries coming with different perspectives, it's important to listen to what um, your, your colleagues are saying and to understand where they are coming from, because people are very passionate about tax. And, you know, and, and, and so it can come across as if it's personal. It is not. They are passionate about their work as you are. And I think it's important to, to listen to what the other person is saying and to listen with a view to understanding and not just to reply. You know, I think, I think that, is, that is also important. I think as well, um, developing an awareness that international tax requires an understanding of global geopolitical dynamics. I think is important. There has to be a sensitivity to cultural dynamics as well. And also a sensitivity to the concerns of taxpayers. Uh, the taxpayers that we are now dealing with in BEPS are particularly multinational enterprises. And I think that uh, it's important to understand their own concerns. You know, uh, the issue of certainty is one of the building blocks, for example, of, of um, pillar one and, you know, a predictable environment. So I think it's important to understand what those concerns are so that our responses can be informed. Re I think reading extensively is also very helpful if you are in the position to do some writing blogs and share your, your opinion, if that is allowed, I think that's important. And I think um, finally, I would advise, um, uh, you know, um, women to share your knowledge with others, right? Uh, mentor somebody else. I think we're seeing a growth now, particularly in the UN committee where I also sit of younger women you know, who, um, who are bright, who are dynamic and, 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 and uh, who have a voice on, you know, and, 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 and it's, 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 it really is a, a joy for me to, to watch, to see younger women coming in the space and, um, and, and sharing their, their, their knowledge, sharing their ideas. And I think that, you know, I think it, it, it really makes, um, it's good for the future, I think, of global tax. And you know, so it's important to mentor somebody else, bring somebody, expose them to what you are learning, and so on. And I think that's that's really helpful. I just want to thank you both for your time today, and I wish you all the best for the next steps. It's a really exciting time to be international tax and covering the inclusive framework. So thank you again for your time. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie, for your patience. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Now, coming attractions. Each week we highlight new and interesting commentary in our magazines. Joining me now is Acquisitions and Engagement Editor-in-Chief Paige Jones. Paige, what will you have for us? Thanks, Dave. In Tax Notes Federal, Christopher McClune illustrates how partners face significantly different tax outcomes depending on how reimbursement transfers are allocated among preformation capital expenditures. Kyle Palmerlow examines inflation's impact on the taxation of capital income. In Tax Note State, four Evershed Sutherland practitioners look at Texas's recently amended rules concerning the state's research and development credit. Three KPMG practitioners write that states will soon look to collect taxes on NFT sales. In Tax Notes International, Marie France Dompierre provides an overview of Canada's tax treatment of non resident professional athletes. Jin Yin Lee argues that the Pillar 2 under tax payments rule departs from international consensus and tax treaties. In featured analysis, Ryan Finley argues that logic behind the final foreign tax credit regulations, attribution requirement conditions concerning foreign jurisdictions transfer pricing rules is more difficult to follow. 
And finally, on the opinions page, Robert Goulder argues that the OECD-driven rollback of foreign digital services taxes should be proportional to participation in the Pillar 1 reforms. That's it for this week. You can follow me online at tax stew, that's S-T-E-W, and be sure to follow at Tax Notes for all things tax. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for a future episode, you can email us at podcast at taxanalyst.org. And as always, if you like what we're doing here, please leave a rating or review wherever you download this podcast. We'll be back next week with another episode of Tax Notes Talk. Tax Notes Talk is a production of Tax Notes. You can learn more about us by visiting www.taxnotes.com slash podcast. When major media wants the straight story, they turn to Tax Notes. Thank you for listening and join us again for another edition of Tax Notes Talk. Want to see more like this? Subscribe for more tax videos. Special thanks to our executive producers, Jasper Smith and Paige Jones, as well as showrunner and audio engineer, Jordan Parrish.